Hey guys, just wanted to make a video to highlight this fight. I did it on stream the other night, uh, but I wanted to make a specific video for this team because a couple people in chat had said that this was a really difficult team to fight. So what I have here is a very large 500k Blob Rodders team. And this is kind of popular with some alliances and not with others. I know with my alliance, we never use it because we don't want to give up our Brotherhood 2 attack team. And we think that one's really important. It is very powerful to have Blob and Toad together. They are a dynamic duo, and they really make that Brotherhood team work a lot better than, say, swapping Blob for Sabretooth does. And I've seen this in other alliances where they've gone heavy with these Blob Rodders teams, like the one that we're fighting here in this video. And I noticed that they failed a lot of Brotherhood versus Coulson fights because they didn't have Blob to help tank that initial burst damage after uh, Toad does his ults. So that is something you are giving up and you need to be aware of if you're going to put Blob on defense and leave the rest of the Brotherhood out there on offense. You need to pick your battles a little better. Make sure that you're going for easier wins or larger punch downs because Blob is a key part of the Brotherhood 2 team. So for this one, I'm taking the Fantastic Four with Torch instead of Thing. Although I will say Thing is a better choice for this particular matchup because his special will help remove deflects right off the bat from Strife because Blob's going to be giving him lots of deflects. And the key is keep keeping those deflects under control and just keeping damage sustained on Strife. The other thing is, of course, Ultron is a very powerful character to have. He is extremely important to this team and he really makes it work. His uh, buffs from his bots hitting some of the Fantastic Four people also helps quite a bit. And then, of course, he does a lot of damage. Now, this is right at the beginning of ISO 8 coming out. So you can see here the enemy team actually had two healers in Emma and Sinister. So you'll see I have to deal with that as well. Getting 5% heals from you know an Emma Frost and a uh, 126k Sinister is actually pretty substantial there's there's a decent amount of heals there probably about 15 20k each time they take a turn plus all the minor regens that they hand out but the thing is with this team you're basically going up against a very sustainable team and the biggest problem is that blob will give the plex to adjacent allies in this case he has sinister and strife which is really the best order you can put this team in in order to take advantage of those deflects However, when you use the Fantastic Four against them, and this is, you know, an 80k punch up in security, mind you, um, the, the passive from Mr. Fantastic is going to provide a lot of assists, and those assists also take away deflects. So if you're getting two attacks per turn, they may be getting one deflect on Strife, but you're removing two deflects at a time. And that helps you manage the deflects so that when you uh, get through them, you, hit, you do more damage and you get, it, get to it quicker. So here we see right off the bat, Mystique does her ult on my Neymar, who takes a pretty big chunk of damage <laughs> from the uh, attack. Even it because he has the uh, security debuff on him right now. Torch flips that debuff into defense up because that's his passive, which is awesome. Love getting debuffs on Torch because his turn comes around and he turns them all into happy little uh, buffs for himself. So here we have the offense up and a couple of deflects as well as a uh, defense up on him for now. But what I do here is I actually go with the special. And the reason why is because it just adds to the offense ups that they have. And I think it's useful just to get those out there because they're all going to get removed by the Emma ult on turn two anyway. So you might as well just get your usage out of them. All right, so here we're going to see uh, Emma got got a pretty big barrier here. Uh, Strife has a little bit of his barrier left, and we're going to use the Namor ult here to clear a bunch of the buffs. But however, remember, if somebody deflects on an attack, they actually will also deflect a buff removal. So there's a bit of that action going on right here, so that's why most of the buffs remained. Uh, I do have my Namor ult maxed, and I do think that's a necessary T4 for war because it really makes this team much, much more powerful especially against these buff heavy defenses. Now you'll see here, every time I get a turn, uh, Blob's gonna provide a deflect to Strife and Sinister. And so you'll see these things count up here pretty quick. So we call in the minions and each of the minions is going to take a turn and provide another deflect to Strife. Um, and here I do something a little bit interesting. So I got lucky and this is not always gonna happen, right? So the taunt got removed from Strife and what I do is I just go ahead and I hit that 
blob because he doesn't have defense up. If he had defense up, I probably would hit him anyway, um, just because the ult from Fantastic does remove defense up. But he doesn't, so I figure I'd just do a bunch of damage to him since he doesn't have a deflect and I can afford to uh, hold off on killing Strife here for a moment. But I figure if I get blob down a little bit more, uh, he's going to take a lot of damage and potentially be easy to knock off later in the fight. Whereas if I had, say, a defense up and no or and or no deflects on Strife, I probably would have hit him with this because I'm just trying to do the most damage here. The other thing I see is I also have an assist coming here from Invisible Woman. And you can see there she crits for 80k, uh, which is pretty powerful, right? So normally she'd be doing like 50, 60k with that attack. That's pretty big. So she, that was uh, a combo of about 150k damage to that big blob. It's I think an 80k blob. Now we're stuck back on Strife because we got blob down to the yellow. Uh, it's the auto taunt from uh, strife but that's okay so he's got a few deflects on him these bots are going to give him a few more deflects because that's just the nature of uh, blobs passive but that's okay we're just going to hit into it we're going to do what we can and we're going to keep laying on the damage and uh, hopefully pick these guys off slowly so they copied my torch which is a little bit lucky i will say uh if they copy say um invisible woman that that barrier plus offense down can be a pain if they copy ultron the bots can be really annoying uh it's really just kind of an rng thing for whoever they uh clone but it's not always there so you can see my namor offense stuff special did a ton of damage and actually took out blob which is awesome here <laughs> now you normally wouldn't get that instead you just keep wailing on strife either way is fine um you're just trying to get through the tanks if you can get through those two you're good and then the rest of them are relatively easy to pick off now here uh my name more gets targeted by emma and does take a lot of damage but he's still kicking uh that that barrier from invisible woman makes a big difference uh here we call in some more minions and since we don't have to worry about the blob deflects it's not too much trouble to continue going through these guys uh so we'll just go ahead and keep wailing on strife as long as we get through strife the rest of this is fairly simple it's very unlikely that they are they would win this fight the only thing that would cause them to win at this point is if i run out of time so I'm gonna take out this strife and then uh, get through all these buffs whenever we can it's gonna take a little while but they do have a lot of sustain they have a lot of buffs they have a lot of regen uh, a lot of barrier uh, there's just a lot of things to deal with but again if if strife loses his taunt uh, keep going at him don't don't try to get like sinister down because as soon as he goes half health strife is gonna auto taunt and you have to go back to him and you don't want to do that you want to make sure you maintain damage on strife get him down and then just finish the job so here I do the ult, even though it's overkill, just to get some energy back so I can call in minions again uh, sooner rather than later. And from here, we're just going to do what we can to finish them off. So there goes Neymar. He finally eats it from a bleed. And then there's a couple of assists. So we'll take out the torch because he's relatively low power anyway. So just finish him off. And then um, this is a waste, actually. Um, so I, I should have just hit Mystique. And the reason why is because Sinister was about to take a turn and his passive heal is huge. So unless you're getting him down to the red, it's not going to do much because he's just going to heal right back up. So now we can go after Sinister because he's got low turn meter and uh, we can finish him off here real quick. But that's really the key to this fight is, you know, don't get don't get too distracted from Strife. If you can take out Strife or Blob, you're going to be on, in good shape, right? But Strife is generally your primary target. Uh, I just so happen to be able to get to that blob a little earlier with the fantastic alt and that made this fight a lot easier however if i had landed that on strife and just kept wailing on him i probably would have just killed him sooner and then gone after blob but that's really the key kill order is strife or blob and then the rest of them uh Emma is always last though. Her sustainability, resistance, and everything makes her very difficult to take down when she has the support of the Sinister. Uh, you need to be careful about that. Don't get lost on trying to kill an Emma early because you may end up running out of time due to her gigantic barriers, self-sustain, and self-healing, especially if she's got the healer ISO class because she's going to be getting a bunch of heals on turn or giving them out to teammates and and they may be giving them to her and it makes this fight take a lot longer than it should. 
here I'm just kind of stuck because Mystique is, is hiding. <laughs> so I have to wait for her to come back available. And as soon as she does, I take her out. And you can see Emma heals herself right back up to full again. So now we got the full team. And here um, I put it on auto because it's more important to get these attacks in and just do damage as fast as possible to get rid of her because she has a lot of health. Um, generally you know i think this was like a 90k emma so she's probably gonna have 300k health uh, especially with the classes now helping and that's a ton of health to get through so just good to see and you can see the team um the team powers here and i'll show the uh, final screen here just to see my team versus theirs as far as the powers go i think that's always good to show in some of these videos and make it easier to understand uh how the fight was set up so here you go so 101k tier 14 invisible woman only a tier 12 uh mr fantastic and torch and then a tier 13 namor and a tier 14 ultron with striker you can see here uh they had a pretty significant uh power level here too um blob was the only one that was not tier 14 so you can see he uh he ate it a little earlier i'm not sure that tier 14 would make that much of a difference on him maybe he was survived a little bit longer but even still um, it wasn't that bad of a fight. And the funny thing is, though, and this is why I really don't think Blob Rodders is good, I would use the exact same team if they had Sabretooth at equal or greater health, right, or greater power, right? F4tron is probably the most reliable counter to Marauders, and I think the only thing that it really counters is uh, X-Force against uh, Marauders. So X-Force is also an excellent Marauders counter, but Blob Rodders, not so much. So F4tron is is a really good Blob Rodders counter. It's a really good uh, Marauders 4 plus 1 of anything counter. They can just plow through them with large punch-ups and do it very effectively and very reliably. So to me, doing an 80k punch up on a team like this, well, I know they just nerfed their attack because they took Blob off their offense. So I think that's really the, the issue with this team is that you're sacrificing another team for it. And Brotherhood 2 is probably a top six war offense easily. Uh, there's a lot of teams that they can take out. So you really need to be careful about that when you're putting mishmash teams together and making sure that you're not losing out on effective power on the other side of the war that could otherwise you know give you another win so just be careful about that but that's how that fight works that's how the breakdown uh goes and i just wanted to point all that out and give a little bit of the reasoning behind how i did that fight and uh how to take care of it so if you have questions let me know if i see another one of these teams uh, i'll definitely try it i'm also curious to see how like doc ock and the s6 do against the blob rotters team just for the fun of it um I don't know how they would do. I'm not really sure, but I would assume that the similar power they could probably win. Uh, other than that, I think you know Black Order is a very simple win against Blob Rodders. You can punch up 150k with Black Order easy. I'm sure uh, they're just overwhelmingly powerful it doesn't matter what you put on defense black order can kill it so <laughs> um but yeah marauders is definitely one of the better defenses we have now so and this is just one variant of it anyway just wanted to show that and uh give you guys the the scoop on how to do that so enjoy the fight and i'll see you later